Hello lovely people, I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. I hope everything has been going well with you. In this video, we're going to be talking concisely on the development of the kidney. It is important we know that the kidney develops from three structures, which are the pronephros, the mesonephros, and the metanephros, which finally becomes the permanent kidney in human being. The pronephros changes from one form to another, that is to say that they are transitional. It is actually a non-functional structure that develops early in the fourth week of the intrauterine life, that is life within the uterine. In human beings, the pronephros disappear soon after it is formed, but in fishes and cyclostomes, they actually serve as a functional kidney. When the pronephros disappear, the nephric duct persists. It helps to convey urine to the cloaca. The nephric duct is also called the nephrogenic duct, and it is formed in relation with the pronephros. Towards the end of the fourth week, the mesonephros develop caudally to the pronephros in the thoracolumba region. In fishes and amphibians, the mesonephros act as a functional kidney. The mesonephros consists of a series of excretory tubules, and these tubules drain urine into the nephric duct, which is now known as the mesonephric duct, which can also be called the Wolfian duct. Through this duct, urine passes to the cloaca. Towards the end of the embryonic period, a greater part of the mesonephric tubules degenerate, while some tubules persist. The ones that persist are modified and take part in forming the duct system of the testes in males, which we can also term the efferent ductules of the testes. In female, the mesonephric tubules form the epiphorum, which is also known as the organ of Rosenmuller, or the parovorium, and the paraophron. They are all rudimentary structures, okay? Don't forget that rudimentary structures are structures that are poorly developed and are not functional. Let's look at the structures that the mesonephric tubules give rise to in males and as well in females. The structures that the mesonephric tubules give rise to in males are the paradigmis, which is also known as organ of giraffes, the appendix of the epididymis, the duct of the epididymis, the ductus deferens, the urethra, the pelvic calyces, which can be referred to as the pelvis of the kidney, the collecting duct, Ejaculatory ducts and the seminal glands are also from these mesonephric tubules. In female, the mesonephric duct gives rise to the following structures. The first is the appendix of the epiphoron. The ducts of the gartner also come from the duct. The urethra, pelvis, calyces, and the collecting duct also come from the duct as well. Let's have a look at the metanephros. The metanephros develops in the fifth week and begins to function as the adult kidney before the end of the fifth week. As for the human kidney, it develops from two major sources. We have the part that develops from the mass of metanephros that is derived from the nephrogenic cord. This part is the excretory part of the kidney, which is known as the nephron. This mass of the metanephros from which the nephron develops from is known as the metanephric blastema. The other source is the one derived from the uteric board, which is actually the metanephric diverticulum. This part is the collecting duct of the kidney. These two parts interact and induce each other through secretion by a process called reciprocal induction to form the permanent kidney. It is important to remember that the uteric board arises from the lower part of the mesonephric duct that is near its entry into the cloaca. As the uteric board grows towards the metanephric blastema, its growing end becomes dilated to form the ampulla. The portion of the mesonephric duct that is between the uteric board and the cloaca is called the common excretory duct. The stalk of the uteric board will give rise to the ureter. Why the ampulla divides repeatedly? The first three generations of divisions of the ampulla will fuse to form the pelvis of the kidney. The next divisions will form the major calyces, while further division will form the minor calyces and the collecting tubules. The cells of the metanephric blastema that makes contact with the ampulla and undergoes differentiation to become a nephron. It is important to note that the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Some S-shaped tubes are formed and they are formed from the solid clumps of cells which are converted into vesicles. The glomerulus of the kidney is formed from each of the distal part of the S-shaped tubes that becomes invaginated by a tooth of capillaries. The remaining part of the S-shaped tube will give rise to the various parts of the nephron. 
Finally, the closed end of the excretory and the collecting part will fuse and the partitions between them disappears and then the metanephric kidney starts functioning. Please know that the part of the mesonephric duct that is cordial to the origin of the uteric board is absorbed into the vesicoutera canal so that the metanephric duct and the uteric board open separately into the urinary bladder. Let's quickly glance through the ascent and the rotation of the kidney but before we do that, Show me some love by clicking on the subscription button, like and also share my video. God bless you immensely. Subsequent development of the embryo and differential growth of the abdominal wall causes the kidney to ascend upward into its adult position in the lumbar region. During this ascent, blood vessels that supply it changes and the higher branches of the iota take over. The lateral sacral artery supply the sacral region, the coda equina precisely, okay? The renal artery is a branch of the descending iota. Initially, the hilum of the kidney is directed ventrally, that is anteriorly, but when it reaches its adult position, the kidney undergoes medial rotation through its longitudinal axis at an angle of 90 degrees. With that, the hilum comes to face medially. I believe this video will make the understanding of development of kidney easier for you. Please don't fail to consult your textbooks in order to learn more. Do not depend entirely on this video. Don't fail to leave a comment on the comment section. In our next video, we'll look at the clinical implication that is associated with the development of the kidney. Until then, remain blessed. God bless you. God got you. Peace.